When you first met the narcissist, they lavished you with attention. You were the best thing since sliced bread. You were perfect in their eyes. They idolised you. But something happened and now, now you're their worst enemy and they're set to destroy you. What did you do wrong? Well, this video is all about how that happened, what happened in the mind of the narcissist to go from one extreme to the other. So if you're experiencing this right now, keep watching. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed to my channel. It makes a huge difference and I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Welcome back to The Nurturing Coach. We've all been there. We've had that horrible experience of being idolised one day and totally devalued the next. So I wanted to explore why it happens, what goes on in the mind of the narcissist, just to help you understand that it was not your fault. Nothing you did caused them to behave this way. So one of the one of the reasons that they do it essentially is that push-pull dynamic. They like to keep you on your toes. So they've idolised you, they've built you up, they've hooked you essentially. You want them, you're addicted to them, like like heroin. Those those receptors in your brain, the same ones that respond to heroin, have gone off, they're firing, because you're addicted to this person. They're everything you want them to be, and they're giving you everything you want. They're texting you all the time, they're telling you all the things that you want to hear, and you're addicted to that. It's easy to be addicted to that. It's our dream come true, someone who absolutely worships the ground that we walk upon. But then what they suddenly do is, like any good drug dealer, they will withdraw. They will take it away from you because in the withdrawal stage, that's when they will work out how much you really want them. And so they will devalue you to test your boundaries. They will pull away to see how much you really want them. And also to twist the power table. Because what often happens, and this is perfectly natural, is that when someone's been treating us that way and then suddenly they don't, we then naturally start to work extra hard thinking we've done something wrong. So we then start texting them or ringing them all the time because we want to get back to that point. We want to get back to that place where everything was great. And at this point, they'll start saying, oh, you're really needy, you're, you're smothering me, all of those kind of terms. And we, we're thinking, well, hang on a minute. You wanted that then, why don't you want it now? And it's, it is that they're testing your boundaries. They want to know, will you do that? Will you keep coming back to them? How far can they push you? Just like a drug dealer would, they want to know how much do they want this? And then they'll give you a little bit. And this is how the narcissist works. They'll have, they'll have the odd time when they're okay with you. And then they'll be absolutely horrendous again. And it is to keep you addicted, keep you in that dependent state. Because they love that. They want you to remain there so that they have ultimate control over you. Because they they make it so they have got something that you want. And so you will remain hooked on them. But it goes deeper than that. I mean, that's that's bad enough but that's the that's the outlying behaviors but let's have a look what's going on inside the mind of the narcissist so what what we found with a lot of personality disorders is that they have a very disorganized attachment style and this comes from childhood they may have had parents who were aggressive one minute and caring the other or they may have had very mixed messages from parents. It was very insecure. So what's happened is the parent has become this source of both comfort and terror. And the brain, as that's gone on, as they've developed, their brain has essentially split into two parts. And we use the term splitting in a psychological sense because that's literally what is, is happening. The brain, neurologically, will form two very separate paths and 
one of those paths is the attachment they want the comfort they want the love they want the reassurance the other one is avoidant they don't need anyone they certainly don't want the cruelty they withdraw and in most of us we have elements of both of them and but they can be switched on at the same time but what happens with narcissists in particular is that these switches become independent and they cannot be switched on at the same time so when they are in the attachment motivation stage and they, they're, de they're valuing you, they are idolising you because they want your closeness, they want you to be close to them, they're pulling you in. What then happens is that switch gets flicked and the avoidant motivation kicks in. So they push you away because they don't want to get hurt. Because you have to remember that the narcissist always has this, they, they always believe that they are very inadequate. They don't present that to the outside world because they're desperately trying to protect that view. But that's their, their true self, is that they have such low self-worth. They are, feel they're totally inadequate. So it, therefore, it's only a matter of time that people figure it out, which is why they go to such extreme lengths to cover it up. And so they pull you close thinking, oh, I, this is what I want, I want this, I want this closeness. I want this love, I want this attachment, it makes me feel good, but then their fear kicks in, and they go, but this person might hurt me, so I've got to push them away, but they deliver it in a very cruel way. Again, they may have learnt that from their own parents, but neurologically, they're being motivated in a very different way. They are motivated to avoid you, to withdraw from you because it's to protect that sense of self and when the other switch is on it's to pull you back and forth but they can't have them on at the same time which is why they see you as either all good or all bad and once that switch has been flicked for a long period of time that's it you are gone you are discarded because that switch is never going back they're never going to need you again so it's done they are solely on the avoidant pathway so i'm aware that that doesn't actually help when you're dealing with it but i for me understanding that this is a neurological issue this is something that's gone on in their head then it's nothing to do with you there's nothing you could do to make that any better you couldn't have loved them anymore you didn't say the wrong thing you, that mistake you made was not what caused this this happened because of something that occurred a long, long time before you were even on the scene, maybe before you were even born. This is deep-seated in their psychology. So for me, I think that that is very empowering because you do feel guilt. You do think, God, if, I, if only I'd done X, Y, or Z, or maybe if I'd just let them get away with that, or maybe if I'd loved them a little bit more, or... Maybe if I hadn't have had that row with them. But actually, knowing this, it wouldn't have mattered. This is how their brain has developed. And so you can let go of that. You can let go of any of that guilt, any of those questions that you had. It wasn't your fault. You didn't do anything wrong. This is just who they are. I hope that helped you in some way. Um, if you do have any further questions, either leave, leave a comment below or email me at inquiries at the nurturingcoach.co.uk. It would be great to hear from you. Um, how, how has your experience been during this, during this phase? Are there any quirks that you wanted to share? Or have you, do you have any questions? Do let me know. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do give me a big click. It really does help spread the word. And don't forget to like, comment and share the video to help me reach more people. Thank you for taking the time to watch and see you in the next video. Bye bye.